As organizations conduct their day-to-day -day business, they generate information and documents as part of daily activities. Progress reports, project artifacts, financial reports, transactions of any type, and templates used while performing business activities are all examples of organizational process assets. Now, they're considered to be assets in that they are developed by or are a product of work performed by the company. Now, in as much as they have perceived value, therefore, they are thought to be assets of the firm. Organizational process assets are typically grouped into distinct formats. First, there are processes and procedures that drive performance, and second format pertains to stored information or data repository. Processes and procedures are often retained within an organization's process asset library or PAL. The process asset library is a compilation of documents and templates used to conduct business by. Process asset libraries typically contain documented rules and guidelines that are developed from requirements borne by the business. Let me give you an example. Federal and local government regulations may require financial institutions to maintain certain documents relative to the manner in which they conduct business. Now, these documents typically require specific types of information and are really auditable artifacts that are required to be maintained. Standard operating procedures are also part of a process asset library. Likewise, process control manuals are good examples of standardized documents that are expected to be followed to the letter when driving process activities. Process asset libraries also maintain templates used for daily and project activities. Now, these templates really help deliver consistency by promoting a standard method for conducting business. Data repositories or a knowledge base can be used to store records and historical information derived from projects and events that transpired in the past. Now, this information, such as prior project activities and lessons learned, can provide vital information for future projects. They can serve to reduce the time required of future projects by delivering efficiencies already developed or by providing information that the project team can apply to minimize or mitigate project risks. The following processes take advantage of organizational process assets as inputs. Develop project charter. Identify stakeholders. Develop project management plan. Plan scope management, plan cost management, plan schedule management, define scope, create WBS, define activities, sequence activities, estimate activity resources, estimate activity durations, develop schedule, estimate costs, determine budget, plan quality, develop human resource plan, plan communications, plan risk management, identify risks, perform qualitative risk analysis, Perform quantitative risk analysis. Plan procurements. Direct and manage project work. Acquire project team. Manage project team. Manage communications. Manage stakeholder expectations. Conduct procurements. Monitor and control project work. Perform integrated change control. Control scope. Control schedule. Control costs. Control quality. Report performance and close project or phase. Now, while organizational process assets help protect teams must run a project, enterprise environmental factors encompass the manner in which an organization performs their business activities. Now, the PMBOK describes enterprise environmental factors as conditions not under the immediate control of the team that influence, constrain, or direct the project program or portfolio. Enterprise environmental factors may enhance or constrain project management options and may have a positive or negative influence on the outcome. They are considered as inputs to most planning processes. Enterprise environmental factors are made up of an organization's culture, which shapes the way decisions are made and the manner in which employees interact. Organizational culture can be thought of as a set of assumptions that guide behaviors. An organization's culture can possess both positive and negative aspects. Depending on the size of the organization, there can be conflicting cultures that exist simultaneously due to complexities in an organization's management structure. Organizational structure is also an enterprise environmental factor. Depending on the organization, its management structure can differ. Organizational structure is the framework by which a group is organized or manner by which it functions. 
it illustrates how the organization is put together and how it is expected to work. Structure determines how members are accepted, how decisions are made, and how an organization's leadership is going to be determined. Organization, culture, and structure can dictate the types of processes deployed within an organization. Now, it can be aligned to regulatory and legal requirements and can dictate the manner by which employees are administered, such as hiring, firing, and performance. Enterprise environmental factors are also attributed to infrastructure and resources, such as facilities and equipment used for project activities, project management information systems, the ability of human resources, and their level of expertise, along with the systems that are used to authorize work on projects and channels of communication, such as email. Additionally, the degree of risk that stakeholders are willing to work with, along with conditions pertaining to the market within which the organization operates, and even the political climate contribute to enterprise environmental factors.